Hi everybody, thanks for coming back for another devotional and we're going to continue in Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. So again it starts out, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he will not go out from it anymore. Now I want to think of another famous pillar, Lot's wife. Ah, remember she was headed out on her way to be saved. She's behind her husband Lot. He didn't even know she had turned around to look back. Why did she look back? Because as we know, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Ah, I don't want that. No. Now listen, everybody. We are in the final days of the church age. We are, in a sense, on our way out. Let's not mess up. Let's stay focused here. What did she look back at? She looked back at man's city. She had some attachments where she came from. Her friends, her home. What was she looking back at? What captured her attention? Why would you look back? Now, some might say God was a little bit harsh when he turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt, but he had to because she messed up the type. You know, we learn doctrine from the types and shadows we see in the scriptures. Here was the bride who looked at judgment. She saw judgment. Therefore, God had to remove her as being a type of the bride because the bride of Christ will never see his judgment, his wrath being poured out on the earth. So you see, we have passed out of his judgment that he is going to pour onto the earth because we have judged ourselves rightly as sinners. We are forgiven sinners. Salvation is free. Now let's persevere to the very end and not mess up just as we're getting out safely, okay? All right, now let's move on here. What's another person who had some experiences uh, with pillars? Well, I'm thinking of Samson. Remember, he had all that strength, but he got uh, tricked into cutting off his strength. Uh, he lost his authority and his power, but then he was taken into captivity, his hair grew back, and uh, he was being led into one of a, a pagan ritual, a pagan celebration, a pagan holiday, and all the heathen were gathered around, and he asked a little lad who was leading him in, uh, we remember Samson was blind, and he asked the boy, just let me touch the sides of the pillars, and he asked God to use him just one last time. And what did he do? Samson, his power had come back, his authority had come back, and he pushed on the pillars of the heathen and their entire structure came down. The, the, all the people came down. Their, the pagan gods were destroyed. So you see, this is a type and shadow of what Satan's pillars are and they can be broken down and they are fragile and God's people and Jesus Christ himself is going to remove the pillars of the enemy's temple but he'll do this when we are, are in with him when we are in Christ when we are the pillars and what's he going to do when we come into his temple we're gonna get some of his graffiti. Yes, but it's good graffiti. It says here that he is gonna write the name of his God on us and the name of the city of his God, the new Jerusalem, which comes out of heaven from God. And he's going to write his new name. So here's what that verse says, Revelation 3.12. And I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And 
my new name. So four times Jesus says the phrase, my God. He's communicating something to us. Remember a couple of video go, videos ago I had mentioned that Jesus needed to put flesh on and teach us how to be sons of God? Well, only God can show us how to worship God. Only God can show us how to submit to God. So Jesus is telling us that he is choosing to submit himself to his father because that's what a good son does and we need that example because after all who can teach you how to worship God but God himself who can teach you how to rule and reign with God except for God the son himself we will always be following Jesus' example. Jesus will always be showing us how to submit to the Father. You know, Jesus bought salvation for us. It's free. And one of the reasons why he did that was to take your hand and his Father's hand and join us together, reconcile us with each other so that we can have a relationship with our Father. But it will still always be Jesus showing us how to have that relationship with God the Father. Mm, I love that. And it says here that Jesus is going to write upon us his new name. Why does Jesus get a new name? Well, we know that he called the tabernacle his name. We know the tabernacle was a type and shadow of his flesh. Think about this. When we are raptured up to heaven and we become, we join him, we are his temple, we join his body, we are going to change his DNA and his DNA is going to change us. The pillars are like the, the bones of a body. Have you ever worked with a remodeler and they'll come out and say, oh yeah, this home has good bones? Well, that's the pillars. The pillars of the temple are like the bones of Jesus' body. In fact, that reminds me of another situation. Think of this about Elijah in 2 Kings 13, 21. It says, as they were burying a man, they saw a marauding band and they cast the man into the grave of Elisha. And when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Wow, the bones were so anointed, they brought a dead man to life. You know, in this scene, we have the death and resurrection being taught to us. Wow. So the pillars are like the bones of the temple, the foundation of the temple. They carry the weight. The, the tabernacle is, and the temple is a picture of Jesus Christ's flesh. So the pillars are a type and shadow of the flesh of Jesus Christ. The pillars are the tabernacle, the temple. Wow. That's amazing. So Jesus, since his DNA will change once we join him, and our DNA will change because we are now one with him. There's no separation. We're not on earth and him in heaven. We're together. He gets a new name. We get his new name graffitied onto us. Oh, I love that. We get the name of the city, the new Jerusalem, written on us. Wow. Even our the name of our city, that's interesting. It's who we belong to. It's our community, where we live. Yes, we will have a new geographic location. Wow, this is almost, it's so complex. It's just too big for our little minds. So this is why Jesus uses these types and shadows to teach us. So there's a lot of incentive for us to overcome. And again, I believe that for some people, it's persecution of their body. And for others, it's deception. And I really am thinking for us, it is this deception we need to overcome. So let's persevere. Let's be strong. Stay in the word. Continue praying. Be fellowshipping with God. Oh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for your encouragement, for your um, you know, sharing your insights. I really appreciate it when you comment. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay? Bye.